Hi everybody. Today we are going to discuss about the training process in deep reinforcement learning. In deep reinforcement learning, the training process differs from traditional machine learning or deep learning uh, in the in the sense that we don't have the predefined data and the level given to us. So therefore we have to generate and while the training happens we also generate the training data. And that additional piece makes it very complex to comprehend, visualize how the steps are interconnected. The purpose of this video is only to touch upon that. We are not going to discuss the foundation and the basics of the As we know that the in the every reinforcement learning process, the, a, there would be an agent which would interact with the environment. And we have taken an environment here, uh, which is quite simple, which is talking about the initial state S and the end state E. And we will assume that there is a robot which have to start from S and then reach up to E using the shortest path available. In state A, there are several actions possible. With each action, there are rewards which is associated with. For example, for upward action, we have named it as A3, and the reward which is uh, possible for uh, this taking this action is R7. Now, for a moment, assume that that is the highest reward. So the agent may be tempted to take that action, and that will lead to a terminal step. From here, he cannot reach to end therefore losing a long-term reward opportunity. On the other hand, if you take this step, it has got two intermediate steps. If you take this step, then there are three intermediate states. So the agent must not jump into the immediate reward, but understand even if the immediate reward are compromised, how do I gain the long-term reward? Designing this environment, giving the appropriate reward to achieve your end objective is one of the job with which professional has to start with. Now here is our agent. The agent comes and uh, he starts with the initial state A's and the question which he has is that how do I know which is the uh, action with which I should start. So for that we apply epsilon greedy strategy which means that sometime I would explore and sometime I would exploit my existing knowledge base. When you want to explore then you randomly choose one of the action and see that if it is better than what I know already know. But for finding the existing policy, typically the agent will go to his own lookup table and from there for a particular state and action pair, he will see what is my calculated long term reward, which is a Q value. Now this Q value uh, table, uh, a table is actually possible when the steps are finite and uh, all state and action pairs are known, uh, then it is possible. But in real life scenario, there would be many scenarios where the, there would be unknown states and unknown action which has to take. And that's why uh, moving away from the table, you would need a probabilistic model, a machine learning model. And because it could be very complex, uh, it, a neural network is preferred here. So lookup table in case of deep reinforcement learning is neural network. Here we need to input the state here, but the state is a scalar. Therefore, we apply one hot encoding to make it in a vector form. Uh, and the size of this vector is nothing but the entire state, number of state which is present here. All of them are here. For all, the, all of the states, we make it as zero except the state which we are interested in. And the output is, uh, the length of the output array is nothing but uh, all the actions which are possible. The, is uh, actually the, uh, th that should be the length of the output array here. 
Now the index positions would be representing the action, whereas the value would be the Q value for that state and action pair, which the neural network had learned earlier. In our case, we can see that the Q value for action A is the maximum, and that's what would be returned to the agent uh, uh, as his preferred action. You might have noticed that this is not the optimum path, but still he is returning A because the Q value is max. Why Q value is max? Because the neural network is not yet trained properly. It could be a random value. So the action is taken, a reward is obtained, and you have reached to the next state. With that, we have generated the first set of uh, training data, which is stored in a experience memory in the form of a tuple where you are also maintaining whether the state is an end state or not. You keep on do doing this from S1 to S2, S2 to S3, and S3 to E. When you reach to E, you know that one episode is over because this is a terminal state, therefore it is true. Then you keep on doing further episodes and store all of them in experience memory. Now, can we use this as a training data? We cannot for the very reason, very simple reason that they are not IID data. They are not independent of each other, neither they are uh, identically distributed. Okay, they are not coming, they, their probability changes as the training happens. They, they are dependent on the previous one. So to break that sequence, the interdependencies between the data and to make it random, we simply take a random values from the experience memory and store it in a batch, which we call it as a mini batch process. And we know that neural networks are trained on a mini batch. So it serves two purposes. We created our batch. We have also broken the, uh, the interdependencies within the data, make, made it IID. And now we are ready to train the neural network. So now we have uh, the data is ready. Therefore, if we uh, move this S here, apply one hot encoding, we are going to get the QSA, which is the predicted value. But like we said earlier, that intuitively we know this value is not correct. It should not give the max value here because then it is giving action A as my preferred action instead of giving action action 2. Okay, instead of giving action 2, it is giving uh, this one, which is let's say action 2 is 19.1. So it should have given this one. So if this is not 20, then what it is? That's what is the, uh, your target value. That's what is the ground truth, which in any other machine learning process uh, would be supplied to us. We'll capture those ground truth against which the network could be trained. But here we don't have it. Therefore, there is an additional step. Like generating the experience uh, memory, we are going to calculate and generate the uh, target data, the level data or the ground truth. So the ground truth, as we know, is the Q value, the actual Q value. An actual Q value uh, can be calculated by applying this formula, which is the basic of RL. The formula says that you have, you have to apply the immediate reward, a discount factor multiplied by the future reward. Now what is future reward? Future reward is the reward which is coming from this value, which is taking the state and the action, S1A, that's the uh, future reward. Now that can be calculated because we have S1 in our uh, experience memory or in the batch. One of the tuple, uh, if we take, then it has got S, it also has got R. So all we have to do is pass the S again to the network and then ask him to give me the target value for this, which is Q S1 A. Once you get it, simply apply the formula 
take the art from there, from the tuple, apply the, the QS1A, which network has given to you, and then there you go, you have got the ground truth. Now, along with this uh, batch data, uh, you are going to store the level data or the ground truth data also. And then calculate the loss function, which is if this is 20 and this is 18, for example, then we know the predicted and ground truth. Uh, if we, the, the predicted minus ground truth uh, is going to give you the MAC, the loss function. And then this loss function can be back propagated to adjust the weight. Training is done for the network. And now it is expected because the weights are adjusted. Next time when you go and uh, feed him, feed him S1, most likely you are not going to get 20 because it's trying to adjust the weight so that it gives you 18. And if this is 18, it is no more the max. The max is then 19.1. And therefore, the action 2 would be suggested by the agent. And that's how the, uh, the, the you know, intu intuition behind the training process of uh, RL. There's one more thing which I uh, want to emphasize here is that in this training process, for every step, for every step we are taking, we are changing the weight. And when we reach to the next step, the target has also changed. You know, the very purpose of giving it, giving S1 as the input and trying to get the Q S1A is to calculate the target. And target should remain fixed. Still, all my, uh, you know, batch training is over. Okay? Because... Uh, otherwise, we are constantly changing the goalpost. So in order to overcome this problem, uh, what we do is uh, we duplicate this network. There would be two network. One network would be used for predicting the QSA. Another network would be used for predicting the QS1A, which in turn will give you the ground truth. And weight and biases of this network, which would be uh, which would be used for QS1A prediction will not be changing as frequently. It will only change at T time step, typically after each episode. Whereas the main network, which is used for QSA, will go through the changes as we have discussed before. So this model of having isolating, having a dual network, uh, one used for predicting the QSA, another use for generating the target value is what is called DQN. That ends our session here. Hopefully this visualization will help you to remember this entire process for longer. And I will see you